following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Tuesday, August 10th, 2021, Season 17, Episode number 8. Welcome to our final edition of The Break Live from Oxnard, California. They are down to the final two practices of Training Camp 2021 presented by American Airlines. And we're going to wrap this thing up for you guys here on the show today. Uh, we're going to give you some impressions from the Hall of Fame game, some impressions from the Cowboys and Rams joint practice, uh, catch you guys up on some injury news. And then we got a real big camp wrap-up where I'm going to ask these guys a lot of different questions about a lot of different things. And they're going to give you some opinions so you have a good understanding of what happened during the three weeks, almost three weeks that we've spent out here in Oxnard covering this theme, team during training camp. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's start first with the Hall of Fame game, uh, scintillating football. Uh, great, great show. I mean, actually, it was great. <laughs> no, it was Nothing? I can't. Was, no. <laughs> okay. It no. wasn't. It okay, wasn't even the last game. I mean, God, it feels like a month ago. I know. It we've does. Sorry, we've like, covered this on other things. We can just gloss over it if well, we want to. Let's do this real quick. Just give me one observation. Each of you give me one observation from that game, and it can't be it sucked. Like, you got to give me an actual analysis-type observation from suck. the game. It didn't suck. It didn't suck. They good. got through the NFL-sanctioned game that they forced them to play. Uh, they, <laughs> they didn't get hurt. And and that that's why it didn't it didn't suck and and they and honestly I thought it wasn't just that game it was a forty eight hour thing I thought it got to give the Cowboys credit for that I, I really think McCarthy and his staff did, it well. did a yeah. good job of playing those guys well knowing what was happening on the back end when the Rams came in and they played some different guys there I thought I thought they kind of got through that little uh, period with not only with some good competition but relatively healthy. Yeah, that's it's a shame, and I, you know I know we did our best on DC.com and we streamed the scrimmage, but I wish that had I wish people could have watched it the way they watched a Hall of Fame game, like broadcast cameras, see the whole thing, because that was the real show. My uh, Hall of Fame game, Micah Parsons good, offensive line bad. Next on to the next one, don't <laughs> care. Uh, but the scrimmage was and cool. even that starting offensive line, second team offensive. Yeah, line. well the, sta- the starting third. offensive yeah. line was Lyell and Tyler for f- six snaps. I yeah. mean, and Connor like. We didn't see the starting offensive line, but the scrimmage, the scrimmage was fun preseason football. Yeah, it was. I mean, I mean, you know, you had Aaron Donald and Connor Williams scrapping, C.D. Lamb catching everything against everybody. Jordan Lewis made some plays in the secondary, which and you know it wasn't a beatdown. Like the Rams made some plays as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it was Sean Jackson, who I didn't even realize was over there. Yeah, getting loose deep. Deshaun, times, ja- so. uh, Deshaun Jackson. Uh, yeah, I, it was. It was that was. I went into the the scrimmage. I was just like, "There's gonna be a fight, and this is gonna be stupid, and we're all gonna feel like we wasted our time." But it was fun. I, yeah. If that's what it's like, I want to do that every year because yeah. I feel like I think they got some really quality work out of that. And and you know, Sean McVay and McCarthy, they made sure that that was the case. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that was their their thing going in. Like we're not we're not trying to go in here and fight. You know, like that, that's that's not Miami productive. T-shirts were just yeah, that's practice. not productive. For Ironic anybody. because they there was a fight on the <laughs> second rep of team, yeah. but they got it they separated. Got it and and did you notice like it, it was very clear? Nick, I think you were the one that told me about McCarthy, um, but but I did see Sean McVay when the fight started. He was on the opposite field. And he sprinted all the way across the field and made a beeline right well, toward Aaron Donald, and had that look on his face, kind of like. Dude, you're my leader. What are you doing? Why are you in the middle of talked this? Talked about you know? this. Yeah. Right, we talked about this. Yeah, well, uh, another play too, and Tony Pollard and, yeah. and some guy, 41. Kenny Young. Yeah. He um th- they had a, a mini scrap whatever if you will in 41. Yeah, it kind of yeah. was like quick hit and, and hit and run. <laughs> right. And and McVay, I thought it was funny. He ran in and and went after Pollard to to stop him like and I was thinking, you know, it's but they're just trying to squash if, it. Well, if you're going to pick the guy yeah. to stop, you know, if you're yeah. Sean McVay, I mean, Pollard is probably your best bet, if that. I but. mean, I get that because Tony's small for an NFL player, but, like, 
On my list of guys who I think are about it, Tony Pollard's high on my list. Like, that oh, life. don't mess with people from Memphis. That's <laughs> yeah. that's like written in stone somewhere. Like, no way. Yeah, he's with like one of those pound for pound guys. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like J.J. Wilcox, just absolutely Muhammad Ali on Dez a couple years ago. Like yeah. Dez looks like the really tough guy, and J.J. was like, uh, I don't know. and J.J.'s uh, the quiet guy. It's uh, like you got to be careful of the quiet guy. I wouldn't right? mess with Tony. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, we've we've heard of stories like that where the a little cornerback actually, yep. you know, beat up like the biggest defensive end on the team. Mm-hmm. So it happens like that. It does. Um, but but you know, Bohannis from Memphis. Yeah, I wouldn't you, mess with him either. Yeah. <laughs> He's six four, three thirty, yeah. and looks like he weighs two eighty. Yeah, the, <laughs> that that combination. If we're just going off of hometown no. hometown scrappers, yeah, Memphis is going to be. Is it up there? They're going to have a high seed in the in the in the <laughs> tournament. I don't know who else is even in there. I don't know. All right, let's move on. I do want to talk a little bit about some injuries. Uh, Neville Gallimore. Gallimore. Let's start with him. Where is he, and, and what's his injury? Um, he did him and Terrell Basham both hurt their ankle. Um, both guys, I don't get the impression that it's like a super big deal. I mean, ankle injuries are never great. So we might not see him practice this week just cause there's only one real practice until we go home, but I don't get family. It was family day to, as well. They had some family members that were there. They got a chance to kind of give some tickets to the family and Gallimore that was pulled out of practice, wanted to go back in after for the Rams practice. But was still out here, you know, taking pictures with his family and visiting with them. So if it was that serious, he would have been up the train yeah. table and with a boot on. And that's all that stuff. which, and we can touch on Shaywo too. That yeah, I was yeah. gonna say is it's been three days since the scrimmage. Yeah, and nothing, nothing has come out about Gallimore or Basham, which is always a sign that it's not a huge deal. Whereas Shaywo, apparently, I have no memory of that, but got hurt during the Hall of Fame game. And they're saying it's a neck injury, and he might be out for a pretty significant yeah, chunk seen, of time. Seen him walk around here this this campus with a pretty extensive neck brace on. So yeah, I mean, it's, that's not good. No, it doesn't feel good. No, it, it's going to be a while from from what we've been told, and a while for a, a backup running back slash fullback that was kind of on the outside of you know making the team. He made it last year for a few games, I think, when Zeke got hurt and. He was on the roster, but it was going to be a tough, still uphill for him to make it. So, um, you know, I, I don't know what's in store for for him. We'll see how serious it is, but it, it smells like a situation of maybe injured reserve. How, how much does that affect how the Cowboys want to play football? Because, I mean, everybody points to the fact that in Green Bay. Um, yeah. um, McCarthy always had a fullback, but he had a really good fullback. So yeah, it, it maybe yeah. it was maybe it was more of a function of yeah, I had a great one, so okay, I was good with that. Rather than I need a fullback in my and, offense in order to make it run. And that fullback, uh, John Kuhn, I believe, yeah, is his John name. Kuhn, I, yeah. He he, they don't have a guy like that here. Yeah. I mean, Shaywo Alana Lua is a is a running back that is really big. He's a big running back that kind of can play that H back role, but he's not he's not just going to mix it up in there and block. They don't really have that guy. Yeah, I'm, I pulled this up for you, Derek. Dallas ran, Dallas ran nine snaps of 21 personnel last year. So was that because they didn't have one? Well, and and uh, yeah, I mean they they likely didn't have one this year. I th- yeah. I really think I think Shaywell might have made the team because he fits an. In- we haven't seen a fourth tight end that really looks like he's deserving of being on the team. Haven't. Probably don't need a fourth running back, but Shea was interesting because he could have been a fullback when you want to do that. Could have been an H back. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's a big body guy, which gives him a role on special teams. I really think, I really think he had a good shot to make the team as kind of a hybrid fourth running back, fourth tight end kind of guy. Um, yeah. And I, you know, maybe he still will. We don't, we don't know the severity, or at least maybe he can get back at some point this season. But it seems like a pretty unfortunate setback for him and for the purposes of what you just said those nine 21 i bet most of those are probably pollard and sure yeah (laughs) right yeah yeah yeah. on the field together more than they were a fullback so cowboys haven't had a fullback a traditional fullback i don't think in quite some while not a not one that you can that they use significantly even when they had one a few years ago they didn't really use him significantly they'd rather go 13 personnel with three tight ends uh or even you know 12 personnel they had two tight ends keith smith had some moments but it was never but never on the like shout out to the bros yeah, there you go. Not and uh, still playing, by the way. He well, is. Awesome. He's in Atlanta now, still yeah. playing. Just had a baby girl. Um, well, his wife. 
But they like, you know, never on the John Kuhn level. Yep. Never. Like, they haven't done that in the time that I've been here. Yep. All right, we're going to take our first break. Uh, it's a little early, but we're going to go and get that break out of the way when we come back. We're going to jump into our camp wrap-up. Uh, I got a lot of questions for these guys on some different areas of the team, things that they've seen out here at training camp that they think will will happen. We're going to get their opinions. We're going to find out whether they're leaning yes or leaning no on some of these uh, thoughts about who's going to be doing what come the regular season. We'll do that when we come back. This is DallasCowboys.com radio. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at Stetson.com slash cowboys. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks. Free shipping. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. Back to the break. Dallas Cowboys training camp returns to the star in Frisco, starting with Cowboys Night, presented by American Airlines on August 16th. Watch the Cowboys practice and enjoy free activities at the star beginning at 4 p.m. Fans have a chance to catch three additional practices On August 20th, 27th, and 28th, admission and parking are free. Visit thestarinfrisco.com for details. That is will be at the Star at Ford Center. Yep. That's where we'll be practicing. Yep, and just so you guys know, if you're in that area, we're having a uh, a special practice on Monday. I think it is uh, this coming Monday. There should be uh, a practice that we'll be having out at the Star. I think it's going to start at 6 p.m. My producer, Chris, I'm looking at him. I think it's at 6 p.m on that uh, Monday night, but uh, make sure you check it out. We'll have some more information for that coming out on our website soon, so you can check that out. But if you're in the Frisco area, try to get out to one of the practices. It'll be a fun time uh, at the set Ford Center at the Star. You got something, Nick? Yeah, I got some awesome news. I mean, this is this is outstanding news, right? Oh, boy. That means it's not going to be that outstanding <laughs> if you did it like that. But go ahead. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's this not. is bad radio. Oh, no, no that's good. It's, it's, that's good. It's good news. Amari Poop. Pooper's off the pup. Oh! Everybody can relax. Let's party, baby. Just in, just in time to go home and practice yeah. in Texas. That's fine. Look, which is exactly I, what they said. The more time oh. goes on, the more I have to say, Dave, I agree with you. Because Let's like go. over time, I've learned, like, I don't need to see these guys in training camp. I don't need to see them in the preseason. There's certain guys... All I need to see you, uh, t- let me know if you're going to be ready Thursday night when they take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like, be on the and, he is one, and he is one of those guys. I don't care about him being out here. No. I really don't. I no. agree. It's a six, it's a six-week ordeal. Yeah. And Tampa, even today, after 20 however many days we've been out here, Tampa is still 30-something Almost days a month away. away. Yeah. yeah. We'd we like got to see plenty him of do, time. do some stuff in practice. You know, and, and here's the thing. When the, they've got this – it's a different schedule, obviously, this year – the last preseason game is really about, for most teams, two weeks away. For the Cowboys, it's like a week and a half away. Um, but still, that's enough time to get some good practices in. I think that's when you want to see Amari Cooper and d Get in for those practices yeah. of that week. It's a little bit more than a, than a regular week. Get into there. Get ready. Get geared up. Understand the game plan, all that. That's kind of where, where I 
would want to see those guys. That Wednesday, I say Wednesday practice, but it's a Thursday game, so whatever. You Sunday. Know, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, all those those days leading up to the game. Labor Day weekend, practice. So let's jump into our, our camp wrap-up. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I have a list of, of statements here. They're not all questions. A lot of them are statements. And what I want you guys to do is tell me if you're leaning yes or leaning no. I know it's not definitive because obviously there's still, like you said, Dave, just a few minutes ago, it's 37 days before the first game. Uh, so there's still a lot more football to be played before they get to a point where they really know how they're going to approach the season. But – if you're leaning yes or leaning no in each of these different areas, let's start first with the quarterback. We just talked about missing time. Dak Prescott will be ready and fully prepared for week one. Are you leaning yes or are you leaning no? C. Shout out Amber Garcia. Yes. Talked to her yesterday. She's so awesome right now. I bet she is. <laughs> Shout out Amber if you're listening. But go ahead. She's Dave. not. She is not. She absolutely is not. Oh, do I have to say something else? Are yeah. You, no. What, be ready. You're leaning yes, leaning no. I'm, why? Because... Um, Going back to – and I get it. Teams lie. That's fair. They always do. But um, contrary to what McCarthy set up on the podium when Dak first got hurt, like they diagnosed this as a two-, three-week injury the minute it happened. And we haven't heard anything from any of the people that we've talked to that suggests that that's not true. I think I – think Wait, back up, back up, back up. Did you just say they diagnosed this as a two- or three-week injury when it happened? Yeah. I thought they told us when it first happened that it was going to be two or three days. Yeah, McCarthy misspoke. Like McCarthy got out and like McCarthy, which I think we talked about this on the last show, McCarthy, we get mad at coaches for not giving us timelines. This is exactly why. Like the people treating Dak are like, yeah, this is a multi-week thing. And McCarthy said that. And, and that's why you don't do that. Because when, it, when you don't meet that deadline, everybody freaks yeah. the hell out. But behind the scenes, nobody's worried that he's off schedule and yeah. hasn't been this entire time. That's yeah. why. Question is what now? Will he be now, ready? Yeah, and I, here's the part. Will he be, I said, will he be ready and fully prepared? Because the reason why I said fully prepared is because how much do you factor in for Dak, a quarterback, if you're not practicing? How much does that affect you being at your best when the games actually yeah. start? Well, it's one of those things where, you know, he's, he's healthy with everything else. He's just, you know, just they want to limit his throwing. So he's been out there. He's been in uniform. He's been... He's had his helmet on, which is important because he was listening to the plays and the play calls and all that. He, he'll be as in tune with what's going on as, as anybody could be. Uh, I think they'll start throwing, you know, again, probably that week we just talked about leading up to the game. Um, the question is, will he get any preseason work? And and I think he will, actually. He'll get yeah. some preseason game, and that's because, because of the ankle injury. He's got to get back out there and just kind of get in the feel of things. Different than D-Law. And Amari Cooper. I don't think they need that. But I think as the quarterback right. who commands the huddle and gets the speed of the game and all that, um, he, he'll, he'll get a few snaps in, in Houston. And timing and those kinds of things is the way I look at it. I think a quarterback has more things that he has to work into. Um, and, and, again, we've seen traditionally – and I shouldn't say traditional. We've seen at times uh, – the, the, this offense has sputtered early in games, and it's kind of like they get in the flow and then they start going. Yeah. I wonder if this is a situation, if he hasn't been practicing, will it take him a while to kind of get the rust off? And when you're playing a team like Tampa Bay to start the season, you might not have that chance to be able to really yeah. you know, get into it. you got to go immediately because that, that defense is really good, and that offense can put up some points. Yeah. Houston game is the 21st, which is 11 days from now. I bet he will play in that game. That would be outstanding. I lean toward. I lean toward thinking that. All right, good, perfect. Reserve right. the right to change my mind. Let's go on to the next to the next topic. C.D. Lamb will be the best wide receiver on this team in 2021. You leaning yes or leaning no? Oh, I hate that question. Yeah, I do too. No, uh, sorry. I'll say no. I just I. No, but ask me another another way to describe it, and I'll say yes. I mean, I could say yes to all of those guys. I think I think Amari Cooper is still the, the better wide receiver of the group. He's he's, I mean he had a, he's coming off a great year. He quietly with four different quarterbacks had ninety two yeah. catches. I think he's the best receiver. That's DeAndre uh, Hopkins type stuff. Like it is. Most receivers don't do that when you put them with all those different quarterbacks. Yeah. No, he 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 was outstanding, and I think he I don't I think you got to see he's got to prove that he can be better than him. Now, who's going to have more top ten plays on SportsCenter? There we go. Yeah, see, that'll be the most dynamic, yeah. and that's yeah. For, I I and that's I hesitate to say CD is going to be the best because I think people sleep on Amari because his game's not very sexy. Like he's a fantastic route runner, quick. 
think about like the best plays he's made here over like he's made some amazing plays you know the overtime winner against Philly he gets behind the defense he's gone to the house from 80 yards out but he doesn't do things like Dez did where he's pinning balls against his helmet and mm-hmm. extending for the goal line and all this crazy stuff. Like, <laughs> or like CD didn't practice where you're kind of right. fully extending and catching ball with one hand. CD's, I don't know. CD's Dez Jr. An Atlanta catch, though, last huh? year. He was about 60 yards downfield, one hand. True. That's probably one of the better catches I can remember. No. Yeah, but but CD's, those are rare. CD's got a flare. Oh, Amari. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Amari, he did yeah. do that. You're right. Yeah. Um, but CD's got a flare for the dramatic. So I bet CD will have – six of the ten best catches of the year, but I'm not ready to say he's a better overall receiver than Amari. But, Can I, go ahead. I mean, not to diminish the question, but the good thing is is that doesn't they don't have to be. You know what I mean? Like they can complement each other and that's what's good. And then and then you got Michael Gallup who just kinda quietly goes about his business and does his thing and and I mean is there a better number three receiver in the league? If it it's probably Tampa, it's Tampa and Dallas. Oh, yeah. Antonio Brown and yeah, AB, whatever, whatever they've Godwin, Godwin and Evans. Yeah, I mean, and I don't, honestly, the way Antonio Brown played last year, I'm not sure if I him? necessarily think he's better. Yeah, yeah, who they yeah. who they have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, I, I'll tell you this. I, I look at this and I, I think I think statistically this year we're going to see CD take a leadership position. I think he'll have the most touchdowns of any of the wide receivers. Um, I think he might have the most catches. Um, I think I think all the way around by the end of this season. He's going to assume a role where, at least from a perception standpoint, he will be the number one wide receiver in Dallas. And here's why I think it is important. You're right. It doesn't matter for right now. Where I think it becomes vitally important is when you get to the end of the season. Because if he is securely one of your your best wide receiver and among the very best in the league, then I think it does affect how you handle the offseason with regards to what you're going to do with Gallup and what that means for Amari Cooper, right? Because... If you've got one of the very best wide receivers in the league, then you know at that point, when his contract comes up, you're about to pay him a ton of money. And that may make you say, okay, maybe we know we can't sustain all three. Who do we really want to keep as the number two? Right? If you're doing a number two, do you really want to keep Gallup or do you want to keep Amari Cooper? Because Amari Cooper, within another year or two, you got to make a decision on him. So I think all that factors in. It all becomes important at the end of the season. And I do think he's going to take that next step and become one of the very best in the league. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Just be, I mean, you're not saving, like you're really not saving money. I guess is my point. Like if you if you offer Gallup a deal, even if you mean, if, even if it means you let go of Amari, like Gallup's deal is going to be big. So you're going to have two really expensive receivers, regardless. I don't know. I don't. Know. But not three. No, I mean right. no. I, I think I mean that will come to a head in some form or fashion at some point. Yep. I don't. I can't imagine all three of them being here. At least, yeah. I can't because yeah. I mean. On I, this trajectory, and I know, like you want to pay, Mike. I do, but I know that you gotta you gotta give up something. Uh, I I put it as four four guys. Dax Dax on a different level. Yeah, and the O line's on a different level. There's four skill players, three receivers and a running back. You can't keep all four. of them. Yeah, you can't no. pay all of them big contracts. And so I th- I I would be working on a deal with Michael Gallup right now. I think he's everything you want for this team as far as a, a playmaker, but also his mindset, his his mentality, the things he said yesterday, the things he said several times in the past. He's the kind of guy you want on your team um, for many reasons. So I would love to pay him, but I understand that if you do that, you might not be able to keep Amari, you might not be able to keep keep Zeke. You might have three high-priced receivers on your team next year and a running back with Tony Pollard and a second and third-round rookie. Can you afford, though? Can I don't know what his contract says, well, but can you afford I mean, to do that? Do you see the subtraction that I'm talking no, about? No, yeah, there? yeah. I mean, I'm saying can you afford so to do that getting financially? Rid of, getting rid of Zeke next year is going to hurt your cap a lot. That's what I'm saying, yeah. A lot. That's my point. Oh, to get rid of Zeke yeah, next yeah. year? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know that you're gaining anything by doing that financially. Well, then, then he may not be the guy that's out then because you're not going to hurt as bad if you get rid of him. Right. I mean – and uh, I mean, we're kind of jumping ahead of ourselves, but I mean, I do think that that you know we'll see how things play out. Things could play out differently today than they are, you know, that's, yesterday. But that's what I, I I keep saying that. I mean, Amari Amari could have with a full season of Dak, he could we could we're like, oh my God, why weren't we talking about Amari as a yeah. top five receiver in the league? Or Gallup could have this amazing year, and like it's, I mean, you. I don't some of these like you don't have to solve everything ahead of time. You really don't. Like if it, if if Gallup has this amazing year, you could even tag him. You can rearrange some contracts to give yourself room to tag him. Like 
you just don't have to do this right now. And I know, like, people are so worried about losing value. They're like, we can't, we can't just let Mike walk for nothing. It's like, nobody said you had to do that. Just, just there's 17 games, and our opinions about these guys fluctuate wildly from year to year, from just, game to yeah. game, from game to game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think, I think, I'll say this, and I know a lot of people that are listening, and all of us play fantasy football. You're going to be pissed off at, at the Cowboys receivers this year. You are. You, there's going to be games where you're going to be mad at, yep. at well, your guys. Honestly, honestly, fun. I, I honestly, I don't know if I agree with that, mainly because the way I look at it is these receivers, there's no receiver in the league outside of maybe two or three that are every week winners. Like, they all kind of have a week when they're great and then a week when they're okay. What I will say is you go back and look at C.D. Lamb last year when he had Dak Prescott. He was an every week start. He was a guy every week that was going to put up numbers. And I think it's going to be just as much so this year. I think C.D. Lamb is a guy. That's why I'm saying I think he's going to take that step to where even if it's a game where he's not in the end zone a lot, he's going to still have five catches, yeah. 75 yards. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? I just think he's going to be your your main like – he is going to be, in my opinion, your most consistent that, threat every week. Well, that I mean, five for 75, is that good enough for where you drafted him? You know, If that's his worst week, yes. Yes, I'll well, take I don't that. Think Okay. Well, I don't think it'll be like that. I mean, I think there'll be games where you can take him away. Uh, but that means that um, Michael Somebody Gallus else. will be will be good. I mean, it's just hard. It, it's just hard to to you know feed everyone. I think I think if you want to if you want a guy like that, I would take Dak. Because Dak's going to be the one that's probably going to going to get you a lot of points there. Sure. Even down in the goal line, Dak will be running in touchdowns. Not as much as Zeke, Maybe. but but hopefully, yeah, oh, yeah, hopefully, yes, hopefully, yeah, it's true. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, the swing tackle is currently on this roster. You leaning yes or leaning no? Uh, I lean toward no. William Lass, our producer. I, I, <laughs> lean, I lean towards yes, but I mean. Actually, I lean toward yes because, like. Like what else is. But that? that's, everybody's like, oh, the offensive line depth on this team sucks. Yeah. Like, get, get in line. No, no, no. There aren't any good. No, like, I, no, there aren't enough good I'm offensive not leaning. linemen. I'm not leaning towards yes. I'm jumping towards yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Without okay. a doubt, right. your swing tackle is on the roster. Yes. I did. Is I, he playing tackle right now? No, he isn't. He is not <laughs> playing tackle right now. There we go. He that's where I was trying tackle. to lean. I'm yeah, glad you it, picked up on it, Nick. And, and that's what I think. That's, Who are we that, talking about? Zach Martin. I think, oh. I think you're starting. Oh, I think you're backup. <laughs> what do you mean, Barf? You barf. love that. No, I, I, it was no. your idea. I loved it. Even when, when the coach didn't okay, know. Actually, no. All right. Keep <laughs> keep going. Keep, <laughs> no, he's killing his own idea. No, keep going, and I'll decide if I hate it or not. Okay. okay. I, I, I just think when we go into Tampa Bay, I think you're starting five. We kind of know who the starting five is going to be. I think your backup a center is will be your starting left guard, and I think your backup swing tackle is your starting right tackle. That's a problem, isn't it? That's, well, it, it, because now one problem becomes two. I, yeah, I get it. I get it, and that's where. But but then again, I mean, it just comes down. It still comes down to your best five. Okay, a guy a guy gets hurt. It, it, it's is T Terrence Steele a better option to play right tackle than Connor McGovern is to play guard? And I'm saying if something were to happen to one of the tackles, you got to move Zach out and you put McG McGovern in to play. Uh, Zach Martin spot instead of Steele just replacing one of the guys. It might depend on which side. I think they're okay with Steele at the right tackle because you got to remember. And Tony Romo used to say this all the time: right tackle better. Don't hold. I can see this guy. You don't have to hold. You don't have to do anything because I can see him coming and I'll get. I'll, I'll get away from him. In fact, Tony could see the guy. I'm behind him for some reason. Yeah. He could do that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, right tackle though. Typically, I, I'll see him coming. Uh, um, for the most part. But left tackle, that's kind of a big deal. So I think they would move Zach maybe to left tackle. But he's not practiced it at all. You know? Here's I think I only like the idea of Zach kicking out if it, you know, knock on wood, but if it's like a significant injury where you've lost a tackle for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like if it's one week, I think I'd rather just – or even to finish a game. Oh yeah, yeah. I th I mean, I think I'd rather just have Terrence Steele run out there maybe. But I don't feel great about that either, so I don't really – I don't have a definitive answer. Maybe I mean, Zach playing right tackle and McGovern playing right guard might be better than Zach playing right guard and Steele playing right tackle. I don't know. That's, they uh, they will sign. Uh, they will claim someone and when when the cuts are made. I, I firmly believe there will be a veteran guy, whether it be tackle or a center. They're going to bring somebody in. Somebody's going to going to drop a player that is just better. They do it almost they do every it all year. year like, and they do it every year. I think I think they've got to do it this year. They're going to find someone probably better than than Ty Inseki 
or steal. Was it this show or I don't remember, but like we feel really good about seven guys on this team right now. Like the starting five and then um, McGovern and then probably Steele, maybe. Uh, just, he's, he's a development just guy. Not, that, not, that they, not like gonna... feel good about him as a player, but feel good that he'll probably be on the team. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And yeah. then after that, I'm like, oh. They've invested on him. So, yeah. so here's the, the follow-up question to that. Top five offensive linemen on this team, leaning yes or leaning no, Smith, Martin, Collins, Williams, Biotish. Um, Did you say Zach? Yes, I said yeah. uh, Smith, Martin, oh, Mark. yeah. Collins, Williams, and Biotish. I think that's so. your top five. Yeah, I, a lot of people are trying to fire Tyler Biotish, but I'm not ready to do that yet. I haven't. So it's, it's a Ricky Waters thing for me. I mean, for who? For what? I mean, who we? Who well, the the question, and I think a lot a of people, center? a lot of people are talking about the fact: that is Connor McGovern better at guard? Is, is he challenging Connor Williams enough to where you say he is one of your better offensive linemen, and that means that? Having him on the field and sliding, which a lot of people aren't in love with Biotis, sliding Connor to center no. gives you your best five. That's no. that's the question for you. I don't it, think so. It doesn't give you your best five. Okay. It, it doesn't because because Biotis is better at center than Connor Williams is right now, especially snapping the ball. Yep. I don't think Connor's there just yet yeah. at all. Now, could he be? I mean, this goes back to what we've said before. He just needs work. And, uh, and I applaud Connor Williams, actually, for, for – his attitude of like he he's like yeah I want to do it I I like doing it. I love playing center you know and so you know here he is going into a contract here maybe he v- sees the value of that of like yep. hey I could play all of these spots um, from college to now I'm playing them all so that might give him more value but you know I I just wish they would have done it earlier because I really think they could have been this could have been something here yeah I don't I don't know what I f- feel about McGovern I think I'm a little bit like you I, I'm with you on that kind of. I don't know. He's, he's I don't know if I'm good. as in love with him as it seems like the reporting has been on him. Like That's I've been, been watching and I, I'm just like looking at him and I'm like, eh. there's some moments, but there are also some moments where I'm like, not so much. So I, I don't I don't know that I've seen what everybody else thinks they're seeing or or reporting. He's he's been fine. He hasn't. Yeah, he's not better than Connor at guard. I don't think <laughs> Connor Williams. They're both named yeah. Connor. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I don't. I don't. I think. I think the the five that we're familiar with will be the five on the field against. I Tampa. will tell you this: Connor Williams, in that last practice against the Rams, showed you something. Like he's out there against Aaron oh, Donald, yeah. and what what you guys didn't see, you saw. I'm assuming everybody saw what led to that little brief skirmish, uh, where Connor kind of threw him down uh, after he had already still made him. But really, I think a lot of the frustration that maybe Donald was feeling came I think from the other end Donald of the field. Donald was mad. When we yeah. were watching them in one-on-ones, and Connor beat him twice. Now, just, one time you could say maybe it was a stalemate. Maybe it was kind of like one he could have gotten off and maybe made a play. But that first one, he got stalemate. Oh, wait, I posted that clip on Twitter, and it made the rounds. And I still got people arguing in my mentions about who won that. And I get it. The second one. No, the the first one. And that, no, literally, I mean, and li- look. There's no question on that. <laughs> I, I've never played offensive line. There are plenty of people saying, he, was, he pushed him five yards deep. I'm like, I don't uh, give a he crap. He anchored. Yeah. No. If an offensive line can anchor and you're not moving him at that point, you're not going anywhere. Not to mention hey, it's Aaron Donald. It's a seven-yard like, drop. If he only goes five yards, I'm fine with that. Yeah, <laughs> and it, and you have a mobile quarterback. Like yeah. I'm telling you, though, it, I had every offensive line expert in on Twitter bickering about who won the rep, and I was just like, if the three-time defensive player of the year – Pushes him four yards back and then stops moving. Connor won. I don't care what you say. And I think Donald proved my point because he was pissed, and that's why they wound up in a fight, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. There, there's no doubt. There, there's no doubt that Connor, I mean, dominated that. That's that's what physics is. You, you, the, they push the pile. That the, everybody does that. It's just, it's how can they anchor and they set and they f- eventually stop it. And that's. Everybody does that. There's going to be your bat, your worst defensive tackle that we have is going to push Zach Martin back a little. Yeah. And then, you know, Travis Frederick used to always do it. And you can see his back just kind of torquing exactly. a little bit. And he anchors it. And then, okay, now you're done. Yep. And yeah. so that, that was a clear I mean, you basically, you're kind, of, you're kind of just going back with them a little yeah. bit just to be able to get to a point where you can anchor, set, and then it stops, right? I mean, I, I hate to say this, but Connor, I mean – Hate to say this, but if we're really being honest, Connor Williams has played well against Aaron Donald yeah. in his career. The times that they've faced him, yeah. he's he's actually done a pretty nice job against him. It was 
some of the other guys, Brockers, I mean, the, and Dominican Sue a few years in the playoffs yeah. Yeah. a few years ago. I mean, he was the one get he gave Zach Martin Sue gave Zach Martin more more problems than Donald gave Connor Williams. I agree now, with that. Did they give some some help? And yes, of course they did. They always will give help for Aaron Donald. But Connor Williams seems to play pretty well against him because if you think about it, Aaron Donald as 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 great as he is, he's not the biggest defensive tackle. He is just so strong, powerful, and 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 he's and got quick. quick. That's the and thing. Yeah. and you got to you know Connor Williams. That's kind of his game too. I'm yeah. not. Fully, Believe me, I'm not say it, saying say that, it, no. Say it. I'm not saying that they're, you know, oh, he, I'm not saying he's the he's the Jordan stopper. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that their games kind of complement well enough where he can kind of hang a little bit. Where the overpowering yeah. guys are the ones going to give Connor a little bit more problems. All right, we're going to take our final break. We're going to come back. I got more questions for these guys. They're actually doing a pretty good job, so I'm proud of you. We do let's a good keep job it up. here. Thank let's, you. Let, well, let's keep it up. Okay. We still got a whole, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes left on the show. See if you guys can continue this kind of energy. We'll be right back. Keep it on this the road. Is, this is DallasCowboys.com Radio. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with United Ag and Turf. Before you can park yourself in front of the game, park yourself in a John Deere and power through your chores. Our Land Run package is a 1025R, 25 horsepower tractor with a loader, rotary cutter, and a box blade for $229 a month. And the price you see is the price you'll pay. No surprises. So don't miss another kickoff. Visit unitedagandturf.com. Offer ends February 1st, 2021. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Now let's get to work. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. New Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. You deserve it. I do deserve that. You deserve decadent flavor without sugar. And a day at the beach without sand getting everywhere. And a relaxing bath that your children don't interrupt. I deserve all that? It's really just a visual metaphor for Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Everything you want, nothing you don't. A visual metaphor on the radio. I do deserve that. Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. The zero you deserve is finally here. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. Back to the break. Stay in the know on all things Dallas Cowboys. Sign up for email notifications for exclusive offers, Cowboys events, and so much more. Sign up via email at dallascowboys.com slash subscribe. Welcome back. It is our final segment out here in Oxnard, California. We're going to wrap this puppy up and head back to – actually, we're going to head to Phoenix for a game and then head back to the warm confines. I just heard you say we're going to wrap. That's all I heard. (laughs) And then we're going to head back to Frisco for for a little practice there. No, not – not not, not not live on the mic. Well, not really. Period. I can't. I'm not. You're not, you're not I listen flow. to it. I listen to it. I can't do it. Really? No. You got, you got no flow at all. Are you kidding me? Really? I would have thought you could have just like off off the head. Just you're like, mocking me right now. No, seriously. I would have thought you could. Like, I really, give me I really something. would have thought you would be pretty decent. At I might have because you're witty too. You I, gotta be. Yeah, right. That's witty. what I'm saying. I thought he'd have a little something. I grew up in New Orleans, but my I am a I'm a Midwestern white guy. Like, no, I got nothing for you. Was that? What was I, it? Stop. I can't rap. Okay. All right. That's okay. Maybe we'll have you work on that, and maybe one day you can do something. Who do you think the we'll best rapper of our of our group is? You think Rob? <laughs> William? Mickey. Long silence. Mickey. 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 Without a doubt. Mickey. 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 Yeah, absolutely Mickey. He's got to. All right, let's jump back in. We're doing a camp wrap-up. We've got some questions or actually topics that we're throwing to these guys. We're finding out if they're leaning yes, leaning no. Let's next talk about Micah Parsons. Michael Par- Micah Parsons will be one of the starting linebackers week one. Mm. Leaning yes, leaning no. I got dinner. I got dinner writing on this. So. Don't let that. Yes. Like you can always back away from it if you want to back away from it. It's a good time to do it. I, Talking to Dave. I mean, yeah, one hundred percent yes. Who yeah. said? Who says no? Dave. 
I said, I, no. I said that in April. You're not feeling right. good about it, especially look at the first game. I mean, look at that. I mean, they just put them out there. I mean, that's your three linebackers. I think they're going to go in that. Yeah, base but what thing. are the odds they open in base? That's just all this comes down to. No, yeah, it does. It Absolutely. comes down to exactly how they open up dot, how they run out of the tunnel in the first, like you know, for that what the starting lineup says. Or right, I, and that's the thing. Like I think when you when you look at it, I think they're going to announce this defense as. Three linebackers. Yeah, yeah. For, more so than they would say, "Hey, we're not going to put Micah on the starting." Anna-. Like well, he is going to be announced as a starter from day one, in my opinion. I just, we yeah. Just got, we just got the a depth chart sent to us from the PR. Oh, right, let's let's what stop. Let's stop quibbling. Let's stop quibbling. Mike is going to play eighty percent or more of the snaps on week one. Will he play the most of any linebacker? Um, yeah, no. Leighton. Leighton will be on the field. Like, Leighton won't come off. And I could see them rotating Micah and Jalen. And <laughs> just what? Look. Okay. Just look. What? Because he's hurt? Well, he's he hurt. Could, guy. He could be. I mean. I mean. He could be. He, he gets I don't hurt. Like, I don't like making fun of people. I'm not hurt. making mm. fun of him. I'm not. That's not making fun of him. I, I love his game. I wish he was on the field more. But he hasn't been. And if he was more consistent, they would have given him that fifth-year option. I'm just so saying. It's not, it's not me. It's the fact that he goes off of the history suggest that he doesn't play as much as you want him well, to Well, and the question would come out of that. If, what are the if odds you know, that he gets hurt in the week, in the season opener two years in a row? But I no, but that's but, that, but yeah. that's where I think I the question so. becomes: if you if you know that he has an, a history of injury, is it smart to put him on the field and say he doesn't come off? Yeah, that's his job. He's the weak li- weak side linebacker. Uh, yeah, but I, I, look I, when you've I'm got when you've got other options though, and you can rotate point. a little bit more. Does it make more sense? We to, said three to, to play two. What about four to play three? I mean, that's what they right. have. So. That's what I'm saying. So so does it make more sense to move those guys around a yeah, little bit more maybe. so he's not taking as many snaps because you want to protect him a little bit more I still when think you have options? Even ha- they're going to find a role for Micah. They're going to find a role for Jalen and Keanu. Um, I still think Leighton's sna- – assuming he's healthy, I think his will be the highest because he's the best pure linebacker in terms of, like, understanding things and being able to make those types right of plays. Right now. What right they, now, yeah, that's what we're talking right about. Yeah, right I'm now, just, I'm just, I'm just saying that more as a kind of <laughs> almost a joke. But three years into Mike's career, not even three years. Give me half the season. Okay, I don't know. His press conference yesterday had him in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, so. I know, I know. He <laughs> didn't shy away from it. He at really all. did it. He was, was like, like, yeah, it'd like, be pretty yeah. sweet. Well, yeah, CD was, had a comment too. Did you see CD's comment? Yeah, yeah. I like, think they're both looking toward that. I'm on grind till I get that gold jacket or whatever he said. Which you should be. Emmett Smith came into the league and said, "What's the rec? Who's got the most yards?" And it's like, "It's what's Walter Payton." He's like. Well, that's what I want. Set big goals. I'm a big <laughs> believer in that. Absolutely. Um, I Leighton Leighton is he's without Sean Lee here. That's he's that guy. And I mean, the parallels of them getting hurt are not. And it's a pretty big coincidence. But like he under, I have no doubt that he understands this thing the best out of anybody. That's what I think people forget about him is is because he, he does he has been injured some. When he's not injured, when he's playing football, he is an all pro player. He, that's how good he can be. That's what's kind and of, we've seen it. That's what's we've scary it, yeah. about this whole thing is that he, you know if, if they can they got to figure out how to get how to get Jalen involved. They got to figure out how to how to what to do with him to get him in his best spot. I think Dan Quinn is the guy to do that, and I think he will. Um, you know, and then Keanu Neal's kind of the same thing. But you got Parsons doing his thing. If Leighton can do his thing, I mean, those linebackers can be really good. They they have the potential to be really good. If Leighton can play a full season and be healthy and play to that level, and what we've seen of Michael Parsons, I, I really believe they could be among the best linebacker duos in the entire league. That's how good they can potentially be. And that would also mean if they're that good, how much do the two of them come off the field? Like, do you want them coming off the field? You know, when you when you look at Carolina, when they were at their best uh, with Keekley and what was the other uh, Thomas guy? Davis. Thomas Davis. When they had the two of them, like, they didn't want them off the field very often because they were that good. It almost gets to that point because they have that kind of potential because they're both really that good when they're healthy and, and out there. Okay, so this bet that you guys have is going to have to be on the field, right? On the field for the first time. All that matters is who's on the field. Okay, because I say this because if you go to the Cowboys, they just sent out, like, their notes for the second game. As Joe walks uh, by yeah, from yeah. our PR department. Yeah, our PR department's going to get a – He's not listening a, to us. They're going to give us a penalty because – 
because, and they know it. I'm looking at Joe Trahan, a PR guy. He's done a great job here at camp. But um, on their on their depth chart, they have 12 guys on defense. Ah, so, so ah, I'm just saying, there you go. That's you can't the way around go, it. You can't go off of that. So there's, no. there's four. There's <laughs> they are going. They are going to list all three linebackers as starters until they don't have a choice. Yeah, it's really. Yeah. it's yeah. really not the linebackers. <laughs> as he points. Joe <laughs> says, "Ding, ding, ding, ding." Bingo. It's not. It's the four defensive yeah. linemen. It, you know, it's two ends, two tackles, three linebackers, two cornerbacks, two safeties, and then NB, nickelback, which yeah. is, is, you know, I guess a good band. But, um, but <laughs> you know, but Jordan, Jordan Lewis uh, is right there now, like coming r- right on his heels, though. Maurice Kennedy, I mean, yeah. you're going to – if he keeps doing this, you got to figure out how to play him, where to play yeah, him. Yeah, it ain't just making the team anymore. It's no, like, how no. does he get on the field? Yeah. No. But, man, I mean, when you just look So at how many linebackers are they listing there in the as among the starters? Three. I mean, Mike is on the outside okay, linebacker, yeah. Layton's outside linebacker, and middle linebacker's jail. You know, the more I think about which – the reason I made that bet is, you know, seniority and politics go into this and $70 million player. But I'm sitting here thinking about it. Tampa's going to open up with three receivers. You're going to be forced to Micah, go. Yeah. Micah better be on the damn field because <laughs> you need speed, and Jalen doesn't have the same caliber. And by the way, even when you said that before, I think there are two things at play. One, we, we, are, we have been conditioned by the Garrett regime that seniority like that matters. Yeah. But the it second might not thing, now. Yeah. yeah, but the second thing that, that I think we got to factor in is if you want to talk about the $70 million man, that's kind of irrelevant. This is a first-round draft pick, yeah. almost a top-10 draft pick. Like, there is no way that you don't want him front and center. And They're getting everything that they wanted when you draft a first-round pick right now, which is the press say, is saying he is a bad A. By the way, he's bad. he's living. That doesn't sound as good. He's a badass. You can say that. We're not no, regulated. I'm not okay. That. I'm not going to say that. But he's living up to it, yeah. which is, you know. I didn't think he was going to be bad, but I wasn't convinced he was just going to skyrocket like this. So sitting here in August, it's a whole lot easier for me to believe he's on the field. No doubt about it. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, and this one, actually, I'm just we're going to do this for fun. Michael Parsons will be the best playmaker on this defense in 2021. Leaning mm. yes, leaning no. Wow, that's a good question. Um... Playmaker. Playmaker. Yeah. He's the guy, like we talked about, CD's going to be that guy that shows up on SportsCenter. If you're going to have a guy on this defense that ever shows up on SportsCenter, God. is uh, he the most likely candidate? Yeah. Yeah, he uh, is. Not, not he for is. Me. I'm going to go for 94. I think I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do it again. I'm 94, gonna, I'm okay. I'm going to go for Randy. I think Randy's going to make some sacks, going to make some fumbles. Going to, you know, I think Randy's got to do, and he did a better job of it last year. Got to cut down those penalties, those Dumb penalties. Cut those down. No more. Don't hit back when they hit you. You know, you're a target. They know, hey, rile up 94, we might get a 15-yard penalty. They did it with Dez back then. Mm-hmm. You can't be that guy. Be disciplined. If he's disciplined and, and goes out there and makes plays, I think he'll be the playmaker. I think he'll make more sacks. I think he'll get some turnovers. Here's why I say yes. It, and it's not so much because I'm convinced Micah Parsons is going to the Hall of Fame. But I think a, I think his role is almost going to be as kind of like a monster That's in this true. defense. That's true. He's he can blitz. He mm-hmm. can cover. He's going to drop. He's going to be able to get picks. I don't know how good he's going to be at it when the when the lights are actually on. But he's clearly got the instincts and he's got the athleticism. So if Randy gets around the corner and swipes the ball out of a guy's hand, he's probably going to be there to get it. If he blitzes and sacks the quarterback and the ball comes loose, he's got the athletic. Like he should be around the ball. Just lot. enough, yeah. and 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 he and he has the instincts to capitalize on it. So you know who, who he's you're... gonna he's gonna be the guy making like finishing other people's plays. Yep. Like Leighton Van Der Esch jars the ball loose, and Micah's on the spot to get the. I can see that very clearly. You, yeah. you, it's like it's what you, happened the other night in the game, by the way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean he was right there to make it, and you know the what you just described reminds me of Troy Palomalu. Yeah. You no, know, no, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to say but it is a similar. It no, is a I'm just similar of, thing of like of just, how he's just how he be plays. the guy, be around the ball, do yeah. this and do I'm that. Just and laughing because he's arguably the best safety of the last 50. I mean, you know, I, I, he's incredible. There. Honestly, top two. There was a time when I thought Troy Palomalu was the best football player in the NFL, yeah, and also, I agree with you. And also, not 100 percent sure that he's like fully human. 
Yeah. Like, really. All true. He was like superhero to yeah. me. I just, the way like, that he used to time the snap and jump oh, over the line. Yeah, and then, and then the very next play, he's 40 yards down the field yep. on a jump ball interception. Like, how do you know? Which I just, I, I don't laugh. say he's going to be that. I, but. I laugh because that is incredibly rare error for anybody to be in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, as I was sitting there watching some of the he's Hall of Fame have to coverage. He's going to that thing for a while, too, my <laughs> if he wants to get to that level. Yeah, Troy Palomalu was like the, that special breed. Like, I think sometimes even. Hall of Fame doesn't really describe how great some players are. Mm -hmm. He's one of those guys that me to me that's even like a step above Hall of Fame. If you could have a step above Hall of Fame, yeah. like, he was just so dramatic in some of the things he was able to do. And and I remember watching him when he was playing. You could see it like, yeah, this dude's special. Yeah. He's different than everybody else. Well, out there. now that we're getting safeties, just all of them are going into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> let's just let's clean it up. Let's go ahead and get twenty. Let's clean it up and get, get, get Woody. In. All right. Um, that's going to be a rep. But actually, before we end the show, real quick, I had a couple questions, but I don't know if we're going to get to all those. So real quick, before we do end the show, I want you to quickly give me one guy that you think was the best player at camp and one guy that most didn't meet the expectations of what you had for him coming into camp. And let's try to avoid guys from a standpoint of injury because yeah. that, that didn't, they didn't really get an opportunity to show you what they could do. You want to do second best? Yeah, yeah. second best player so camp. Because it, it was CD. CD obviously. was the best player <laughs> yeah, right. in not this even, camp and then close. in a lot of camps. But better better than than some of Des Bryant's camps where he's he was really outstanding. Yeah. This guy did it every single day, and he had like a highlight catch of the day. In fact, He's going to be the best just, receiver on this team. Well, well, say it then. <laughs> I already said it. What, what he's going to be the best receiver. On that other say it with your chest. He's going to he's going to be the best receiver on this team this year. Go ahead. Okay, so who? What other player who was just balling out? Yeah. I mean, I tell you what, the guy covering him wasn't too bad either. Even though he was giving up some plays every now and again. I mean, I thought Trayvon Diggs was was pretty good. I don't know if he was the second best of camp because uh, it's hard it's hard to say. Well. CD was the best, and the guy covering him every every yeah. time was second best. But he definitely competed pretty pretty well. Chris, Chris, our producer thinks it's Maurice Kennedy. That's not a bad that's not a bad guess. He's had a really fantastic camp. I, and a lot of that's expectations. Too, sure, yeah. Expected. I mean, I'm, I'm, how about how about Dalton Schultz? Dalton Schultz did did almost everything that they they could have asked from him. I mean, he he's all, I mean, even when he when he starts, then when when Jarwin's out, he has great catches. When he's not, he comes in with the second team and he has great catches. I'm kind of shocked y'all not giving Randy some uh, love. Randy, no, it's good. It, my it's answer would, my answer would either be Randy or Micah. Yeah, and I th I mean, my, I, I I already have, but I I can't say enough about you know. There's a ton of expectations on a 12th overall pick. Learning that didn't play last year at all. Didn't have a didn't have a junior season. Just kicking ass every day out here for the most part. Yeah. Um, so him or Randy, one or one or the other. Uh, and then what guy? What guy didn't meet your expectations? Guy, you came into camp and you were like, oh, man, I really think this guy has some. And then it was just like I didn't really see it. Okay, let's think here. <laughs> I mean, it's. Yeah, was this on the list? Yeah. Should, should we? This is one. Yeah, we, this is one you could have been prepared this for. Could have been prepared yeah, you for. Could have been prepared. Okay, so we're making bad radio here. We're making yeah. bad radio. Yeah, you could have been prepared for. We're it. making bad radio. That's okay. Um, damn. Uh, do, you, do you have a guy? <sighs> it's, I'm struggling. I'm str um, I, know, I didn't think I, mean, I was going to answer well, it, but well, um, I just, I, I, the big one, and it's injury. But I mean, I mean, Jordan Jordan Lewis just hasn't had much of a camp. He did make. He made a couple plays in the scrimmage the other day. But and that's it's injury though it's not he yeah. just he hasn't looked bad he just really hasn't been able. I'll to get give out you there. one for me. I'll, I'll give you one for me. I'll give one. Okay, go ahead. Keanu Neal. Okay. Keanu, I mean, I thought I expected a little bit more. I thought a little bit more. Now, again, he is a thumper player. He's a hundred tackle a year type of guy. Mm -hmm. You're not doing that out here, especially to this team. So you're not going to see that physicality as much. I thought we might see a little bit more. Remember, he was a Pro Bowl safety, so I thought we would see a little bit more to that. I I just haven't yet. That's not necessarily his fault, but. I I get and I just re, um and he hasn't been bad, but Brent Urban hasn't just. Mm. Yeah, you know, I came. I you was thought like, he was going to be your we starter. Were, I was yeah. like, he's definitely the starting one technique. He's going to be the guy, and that's actually been Carlos Watkins, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Who nobody was talking about before camp. So and it's looked pretty good out here. Yeah. 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 I don't think Urban's had. One. I don't think Urban's had a bad camp, but I I thought he would kind of be more of the guy. I got another one. Okay. I'm sorry, Dave. Uh oh. I Kelvin. 
Jabril Cox. Oh, oh yeah, that was going to be mine. I haven't yeah. seen anything. Yeah, that's I fair. want I want to see some stuff. He played yeah. well in the game. And what? why did I? My, why did my voice get so I don't high? know. <laughs> he played well in the game. Because you don't even believe it. Like you didn't say what, it with your chest. You know, he played well it's in the, the game. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. <laughs> you keep going. He played well in the game. Because y'all are y'all <laughs> don't believe me. He had five tackles. He made a great tackle in he space. He played well in the game. He played well in the game. <laughs> <laughs> EA sport. He's a gamer. <laughs> I'll throw out one other one. Um, and and this is only my only my own personal because you guys may not have even had the same ex- expectation. I expected Terrence Still, after all the experience he had last year, to be better this year in camp. And I really haven't seen it. I still see the same things I saw kind of during the season last year, which were he's okay. He's going to give up, still give up a lot. He's still not going to quite be solid enough for you to feel great about putting him out there, even in, in backup duty. I don't feel great about that. Um, so, so for me, I just expected a little bit more than what I've seen out here. The offseason storyline was, you know, everybody's optimistic. You're like, Steel and Knight got thrown into the fire. They're, they're going to be so much better for it. And they kind of look like the same players. Yeah. Um, so it's almost like that, that whole experience didn't really net you a ton, you know, at least as of right now, what I'm seeing. Sometimes, I mean, the Cowboys find gems and undrafted free agency all the time, but undrafted players. I don't know. All right. That is a wrap, guys. We appreciate you joining us. We will be back on Monday, actually. Once we uh, get back to Frisco, we'll be back on the air Monday. Check the website. We'll have a full schedule up there. We'll continue our shows. We'll get back to our normal uh, our normal groups as well. I know the break has been intact, but a lot of the other groups have been kind of mixed based upon who was at camp and who wasn't. But we'll be back to our normal shows uh, starting next week. We'll be alternating days. Uh, but we start up on Monday, and uh, we'll let you know what time on the website later uh, later today, hopefully. Until then, for Nick Eatman, Dave Hellman, uh, we appreciate you guys joining us here, here from uh, our final edition from Oxnard, California, for the break. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!